So next we look at the digital forensic process. Okay, so earlier we talked about what is the overview of digital forensic. We talked about what is digital evidence and then uh, the forensic. And now we talk about the actual process. So principle of digital forensic. So first of all is these are the principles. Um, okay, so first of all, we talk about the uh, time, the timeliness. So we should actually collect evidence as soon as possible to ensure that it is not damaged. Okay, this is very true. And also, okay, the damage here could means that uh, before the, uh, the the digital evidence has been tampered or being uh, deleted by somebody. Okay. Um, ex again, also the continuity explain changes in the evidence form when it is initially collected to when it's officially presented. Okay. So this we have to explain. Uh, so maybe sometimes when we we did a process. And like I said, sometimes uh, some of the tools might actually alter uh, some of the uh, uh, the attributes of the, the digital evidence okay, in order to, to process the information. So it might damage the uh, some of the original source. Um, comprehensiveness. Search all the files in the target system comprehensively analyze them and provide necessary expert testimony okay and okay this is very important and so legitimacy the entire examination and forensic process must be supervised okay so uh, the person that collects the uh, evidence uh, the whole entire process it has to be supervised uh, in order to 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 be to be verified verifiable so that uh, the person that collects the evidence uh, might not be the person which is collaborate with the attacker um, so during the forensic examination protect the target computer system or to avoid any changes this is very important data damages or maybe the virus infection okay it's just like when you collect a physical evidence we want to preserve it as as it is you know um, as original as it is and we do not want something to change the uh, the computer system digital forensic process now according to the characteristics of digital evidence it is essential to collect evidence as soon as possible during the digital forensic to ensure that it has not been damaged now just like what we saw in the movie an example like the CSI the crime scene investigation and usually there's the crime happens um, so the CSI, the CSI team will be the first to go into the scene and um, you know they will lock down the whole area and uh, nothing can be touched and they will start doing some collection of the evidence now it's quite similar in, in this sense here uh, so first of all we need to know how to protect the scene as in dig digital scene uh, then after that we have to know how to obtain the evidence the digital uh, evidence so once we obtain how do we preserve okay so we want to make sure that the evidence cannot be tampered cannot be modified cannot be altered and after that how do we verify the evidence then after that we need to analyze uh, based on the evidence and so from evidence we can start to do some tracing for example like we can trace where the source coming from uh, from which computer or maybe from which IP address and finally we need to know how to present the evidence uh, to the court so first of all is protecting the scene so before digital forensic is performed we have to freeze the target computer system so that the criminal suspect cannot damage the evidence okay so sometimes it is good to ask the person to remove uh, to 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 get out from the you know to step up uh, from the seat so that that person might might not be able to delete or format the entire machine and to avoid any changes to system setting damage hardware okay data or virus infection okay um, avoid changes in evidence definitely however if changes occurred from 
when the evidence is initially collected to when it's officially presented, they must be explained. Okay, so for example, uh, from the moment we collect something and uh, and during the process, okay, so we have to perform some uh, some diagnostic tools and that diagnostic tool might actually alter the uh, original content. So this this, ex this whole process has to be explained. So in addition, the whole process of the digital forensic must be supervised. So you must have a third party to to be the witness that says that this evidence has not been uh, tampered and it's actually went through a proper process of uh, collecting the information. So after that, obtain the evidence, search all the files in the target system, including existing normal files. Okay, normal files are easy. Yeah, you can just use a browser and you can browse the files. Deleted files that are still exist on on the on the disk. So typically when we delete a file, they are they are the, 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 the bytes of the, the bits and the bytes are still actually stored on the uh, the uh, maybe the hard disk or the SSD or maybe the the micro SD card. So and uh, for example files are not overwritten by uh, any new files. And sometimes could be some hidden files, okay. And also some of the files are password protected, and also the uh, encrypted files as well. So the forensic tools that we typically use are hardware tools and also the software tools. So this is an example of the hardware forensic tools. So here we have two examples. Uh, one is called the hard disk duplicator, and you can see there. Are uh, this is actually like a, a case where you can put in a hard drive and you can put in another piece of hard disk, a blank hard disk and then you can actually start to do the uh, duplicating, okay? And there's another type of the, uh, uh, we call it the uh, hard disk read-only locker. Um, so, so first of all, let's talk about the uh, hard disk duplicator. So the, the function of these tools is to mirror the content of the hard disk to ensure that the data of the original hard disk is not modified. And this must be ensured because the right operation is not permitted on the original hard disk during forensic. Okay. And next one is called the hard disk read-only locks. So it blocks the right channel of a hard disk to ensure that the data in a storage medium is not modified. So during the data obtaining and analysis, therefore ensuring the data integrity. Okay. So this is actually, like I said, very important. We do not want the disk to be uh, modified. Uh, one of the, like I said, one of the very important thing is the attribute of a file. There's something called the access time. What is the last access time to enter the file? Okay. So if let's say uh, the the hacker access one of the files yesterday, and let's say today we try to read the file and to see what is what are the files, what's the content of the file. So we actually, if we access today, the last access time might change according to today's time instead of yesterday's time. So with the hard disk read-only locker, it actually locks down the entire hard disk and not even the uh, the attributes of this can be changed. Okay. Hardware forensic tools. These are the tools to help to collect the evidence. So first we look at all-in-one forensic appliance. This is a forensic device that clones, reads, and also to disrupt evidence. Okay, this is the this is how it looks like. And we also have something called the forensic tower. Okay, this is how it looks like, the forensic tower. It provides functions such as mobile phones forensic analysis, mobile phones mirroring, mobile phones chip mirroring, and also media forensic. So this is where you put your smartphones to be uh, mirrored. And we also have something called the media repair device. So this is to repair electronic data storage media, such as electronic hard disk. In other words, example like SSD, uh, hard disk. And uh, we also can do the repair for mechanical hard disk. This is our typical rotational hard disk. Uh, so here we can do mirroring of the files without uh, tempering the, the file access date and time. 
we also can repair USB drives and also TF cards. Now in China, it's called TF cards, and the rest of the world, we call this a SD card. Okay, so those are the hardware. So how about software? So in software, for ease of research, developers have created a wide variety of the computer forensic tools as below. So okay, um, so we have something called the image check tools, uh, Tom Plus. Okay, you can um, anti deletion tools. Okay, so here we have Hitman Uneraser. Okay, so there are tools that you can uh, try to perform the unerase of uh, those uh, file. Now remember, files that are erased, uh, they they normally will left the the digital footprint uh, on the on the blocks on the hard disk blocks. So with the uneraser, they are able to recover block by block and try to identify all these blocks are actually a, a word file, a JPEG, or etc. etc. And we also have the CD-ROM tools. This is for the uh, CD-ROM diagnostics, text search tools. This is to search for any text within the whole entire hard drive. Just to search for a keyword, driver image program, save back, snap back, ghost, and DD. So this is what we call the uh, uh, disk cloning software. And also we have the disk erasing tools, disk scrap, for example, just to erase. Uh, had this the, the proper way so example of the foreign uh, forensic tools okay, so this is one of the example is called the end case now end case is a forensic application completely integrated with the windows ui okay the graphic interface and it provides functions such as data browsing search this browsing and data preview case creation evidence file creation and also case saving okay so this is a, a complete uh, so most of the uh, uh, forensic today nowadays they actually pretty much depend on this this software it's called the end case so these are some of the uh, other digital forensic related technologies so here we have the uh, network packet uh, analysis analysis and the forensic okay so i think uh, some of the tools we did mention in the previous chapter for example like the wireshark uh, lock uh, forensic. Okay, we can also use a lock uh, analyzer. Uh, honeypot, honeypot forensic. Um, covert code forensic. Data mining, and also some of the uh, the future kind of uh, technologies such as the chip forensic, cloud forensic, IoT forensic, and there's a side channel attack forensic. Okay, so these are actually some of the emerging technologies. Which will is, is actually some of the uh, future trend of the forensic technology. Okay, using the cloud to do the uh, the, the process. So these are some examples: uh, the packet analysis and forensic. So for in the Linux environment, TCP dump is uh, is one of the tools to collect the uh, network uh, packet and also can perform filtering. You can mention will only collect whatever packet which is interested and also we have the wire shot uh, that wire shot is quite similar to TCP dump uh, we also have the slot uh, kit this is for the uh, collection filtering stream reassemble and also the data association okay so we can let you associate the which uh, data packet uh, within the network uh, and so we can reassemble all the stream of the packet and we have the the Argus okay the Argus is also for collection filtering and log analysis we also have a sniffer kind of software this is to sniff the the network packets and also for the packet analysis okay. so this is example of the chip uh, forensic okay so this is uh, we call it the uh, joint test action group analysis uh, access the internal register of the analysis processor through the test access port TAP inside the chip this is a chip okay um, forensic tank implement can be implemented even though the phone is damaged okay um, so th this example even though the phone is damages we can, they can actually go in through the chip here and to try to recover some information uh, so the red box in the figure shows this is the phone chips you can use the analysis tool to collect the evidence from the damaged uh, phone chip. Okay, 
So this is actually to try to gain access to all this information. And we also have something called the dynamic simulation. Dynamic simulation is used to simulate the mobile phones in order to restore the chat history and also to group the discussion information and try to extract the files from the chat software. Right. So for example, in this case, uh, this is the example of a uh, software uh, apps called uh, WeChat. Okay. Uh, WeChat is something like uh, the uh, WhatsApp in the Western world. WeChat is the one in the used primarily in China. And so, and we can uh, analyze the number of uh, reposts, how many posts that the the person that has been uh, sent up, uh, what is the impact scope, source of information, and and many more. So, as shown as the figure below. This simulator is used to simulate the operation environment of the mobile phones and display the digital red en envelopes records. Now, digital red envelopes uh, in China, this is called Hongbao, and this is actually uh, it's like a, a, a transaction of a, a money. Okay, so if you send somebody with the red envelopes, uh, you're actually sending with uh, X amount of money. And all these transaction records can be can be traced back, okay? Or how much money you receive from uh, maybe from corruption or whatever it means. So next is how do we preserve the evidence? Now, preserve uh, preservation of the evidence directly affects the legal uh, effects of the evidence, which is very true. Only preservation technologies that conform to legal regulations can guarantee the authenticity authenticity and reliability of the evidence. So evidence preservation technologies includes uh, encryption of the information, digital envelope, digital signature, digital certificate, and also the timestamp okay, to preserve the evidence which is collected during that time. Okay. So here are the uh, preservation technologies. So to avoid the changes in the system settings, hardware damages, uh, data damages, and virus infection during the forensic. All right, so during the forensic to preserve the evidence in the initial state. So we can actually use some of the technology that we, we pretty much studied in the previous uh, chapter. The encryption, decryption, the digital certificate. Okay, so we can use all these to actually uh, to encrypt the information uh, as, as evidence. Okay, now what's most important thing is actually the timestamp uh, is to prove when was the uh, data uh, being uh, being recorded as the evidence. Okay, so verifying the evidence. Okay, so verify the integrity of the evidence and determine whether it complies with the applicable standards. Okay. So normally we will talk about the relevance of the that digital in, uh, evidence with the case, uh, and also the validity and also the objectivity. Okay, so what's the reason why we need to preserve this piece of information? What has this have relevant to do with the uh, uh, the the victims or maybe the uh, attackers, and also the validity of the of the evidence? Okay, so this is actually the the three. Uh, criteria uh, to to verify. Okay. So principle of the digital ev uh, evidence of verification. So electronic data verification is a special scientific and technical activities and has its own specific uh, principles. So here we have the legitimacy, um, independence, and supervision. So what's the legitimacy? This is the judicial verification of electronic data should be standardized and institutionalized in terms of business scope, verification procedure, and also technical standards. So first of all, in terms of uh, how do we verify uh, the, the way the standardization it has to be published okay, by the uh, government uh, body uh, of the legitimacy. And next is the supervision. Now, supervision is the ju judicial verification of electronic data should be supervised by the investigator or by the public. Okay, so it has to be opened and to 
to prove that the evidence is actually uh, is actually transparent throughout the whole process of collecting and independence the judicial verifier of the electronic data independently express verification opinion without external interference so the uh, judi judi <laughs> judicial verif the verifier it could be a third party uh, company and uh, it, it should actually express uh, what is the content of the uh, evidence without being feared by the um, uh, by the uh, the attacker or maybe uh, some of the big companies that tempered the uh, uh, that was uh, involved in the uh, in the in the in the court case. Okay. And after that, analyzing the evidence. Okay, evidence analysis. Search for or match the keyword or key phrase in the obtained data flow of information flow to analyze the relevance of the events. So evidence analysis technology includes password crack cracking and data decryption, file attributes analysis, digital digest analysis, log analysis, and also the reverse engineering. Okay, so there are times where some of the evidence in the file are being um, being uh, encrypted, or maybe it has been um, encoded with a password. Right? For example, a zip file, we can actually, uh, somebody could probably could uh, might have uh, zip all the important documents uh, with a password. So we sometimes we need the password cracking tools to analyze, uh, to de de decipher, okay, or maybe to crack down uh, the protected files, okay, uh, file attributes uh, analysis, okay, so same thing like I mentioned, so every file, every uh, every files they have the, the uh, metadata information and all this information can, has to be uh, analyzed, digital digest, log an analysis, or sometimes you could even need to perform reverse engineering uh, to redo the entire process, okay. Right. Next step is tracing. With the upgrade of cybercrime technologies, forensics has been combined with network security tools such as intrusion detection to implement dynamic forensic. So the purpose of the tracing is to find where the attack source. Okay. So um, so how can we trace back the uh, the origin? Okay. So um, such up technologies we have. Uh, log analysis okay so from uh, what kind of logs now in the previous chapter we did mention about the operating system logs we also mentioned from the firewall logs uh, firewall logs is one of the best uh, indicator to figure out the source IP address that launches the attack and also sometimes in the application software logs they do contain the uh, uh, the information about the, the source okay um, and also we can also use uh, trapping uh, mechanism okay sometimes this is called as a honey pot now honey pot is actually a it's, it's a kind of um, environment that we uh, that the uh, organization purposely planted in so that uh, is to trap the um, uh, the attacker from falling into the trap so from there we can actually understand uh, the method, the mechanism, how they actually enter into our system, what kind of uh, method they're using. So from there we can learn how to prevent, and also from there we can trace who are the, uh, uh, who, who where the where the source comes from, uh, and also uh, tracing, capturing suspect using the uh, related devices, okay, such as the uh, firewall, uh, routers, and uh, maybe switches, etc., etc. Right, so this is the uh, forensic uh, tracing uh, technologies. So hackers usually use data encryption um, to protect uh, the information that they are sending. Uh, let's say they sometimes send out uh, the information back to their own uh, server. Uh, they also like to do log clearing to clean up all the logs information because they know that uh, we will be using the logs to track them. All right, so we can also use sniffer. Um, sorry, they also like to use sniffer and also stepping stone or maybe a bastion host 
so Baston hose is usually is like a we call it a jumping ho a hose a jumping machine, where this is the first uh, point of uh, contact. From there, they actually can enter to the uh, uh, company resource. For example, they probably could enter the uh, some of the employees. Uh, uh, the uh, machine, maybe the laptop, which is in the public area, they manage to gain access to the uh, uh, to the machine, the laptops, and from the laptop they then uh, VPN back to the the company. So this is where uh, we call it the uh, bastion uh, host, or maybe they can they also can uh, uh, they are very well known to hide or maybe to clear the intrusion traces, so to clean up all the uh, the transaction or the loss. So therefore, it is necessary to implement forensic tracing on intrusion information. So common techniques are like uh, ping, the netstat, trace route, or maybe the NS lookup commands uh, to actually tr try to perform to look back the um, to trace back the uh, the origin. So for example, uh, from the ping command, uh, we can actually tr ping from the routers or maybe from the firewall. To the uh, uh, to the uh, source IP address, which is the uh, hacker's uh, machine, we can also perform NS lookup and to try to figure out this IP address uh, actually coming from which country, and we can also do a trace route to see how many hops is actually uh, so from the from our own router to the uh, to the hacker's uh, machine, how many hop counts are they involved? Uh, are they from the same local region, or is, are they from overseas, etc., etc. And also uh, packet analysis, so we can actually analyze uh, the packet that they are sending to us, um, and also log analysis, which we already discussed in the previous. Um, we can perform a link test to look at the the milliseconds to see are they close to us or are they far from us. Um, and also the uh, the packets are records, okay, or what time they enter, uh, they attempt the first, uh, what is the time that they actually uh, send the first attempt, and and how long have have they been trying, uh, in order to get successful penetration, and also the packet tag uh, tracing, and also spam, okay. So we can also use the spam to trace the. Um, Spam mail is basically the uh, junk mail, uh, so from there we can also roughly uh, to do some uh, tracing. So presenting evidence, now, this is actually the final stage, where we need to preserve all the uh, evidence and then uh, to submit to the uh, judicial um, authority. So this is to to mark the extraction time. So when do we extract the information? This has to be recorded. The place of extraction, what kind of device uh, were extracted, and what extractor we use. Uh, did we use uh, like a hard disk cloning method, or did we use a, a kind of software to pull out the uh, information, and also the witness to the evidence? So, who actually observed during the process, just to ensure that all the information that we extracted, uh, we as a investigator, we did not. Uh, mo modify the contents, so, and also submit the evidence to the judiciary authority in a visible forms, and also to pro provide a complete supervision chain. So this is very important. Right. So let's talk about quiz. Which of the following is not a characteristic of digital evidence? So we have A diverse, B high tech, C shapeless, and D not easy to be damaged. Now the answer here is D, not easy to be damaged. Right, second question. Which of the following is not a principle of digital evidence verification? So we have A, legitimacy, B, independence, C, reliability, and D, supervision. Now the answer here will be reliability. Right, so in summary, uh, we spoke about the overview of the digital forensic, we spoke about cyber crimes, and also we talked about the, the overview of how the digital forensic, uh, and also we mentioned the digital forensic processes. 
thank you and i'll see you guys in the next chapter